Hello and welcome to the program here on Health Professional Radio. I'm your host, Neil Howard, for this health supplier segment of the show. I'm going to have a conversation with Dr. Lucy Ide. She's the founder of Remedy. Remedy is a cloud-based software platform that enables personalized management of chronic cardiometabolic conditions. And she's joining us uh, on the program to talk about why new healthcare technology must be designed with the clinician's needs in mind. Welcome to the program, Dr. Lucy Ide. How are you? I'm great. Thanks for having me. You are, of course, the uh, the founder of Remedy. Uh, what's your background? So I uh, trained as a physician. I have an MD and a PhD in pharmacology, worked on gene therapy, um, but spent the first part of my career before going into healthcare, working in mobile technology for the government, um, and then investing in mobile technologies um, in, with a venture capital fund. So a little bit of everything. <laughs> Quite a, a diverse background, right? Yeah, you know, and trying to bring all of that together um, in Remedy, focusing on, you know, health innovation and how technologies can benefit healthcare. And that is that the, the reason that you started Remedy, to, to combine the two? You know, part of it, uh, once I got into the practice of medicine and sort of seeing the opportunity to drive efficiency and, and use technology, um, but really thought I would go back to the investor side, to a venture capital fund investing in healthcare technologies, and then realized that part of our challenge in healthcare, in my opinion, is that not enough of the solutions are being created by clinicians, by people who really have that frontline experience. So that's why I decided to start a company myself instead of uh, investing in other people's companies. What exactly is a cardiometabolic condition and is there an unmet need? Uh, is that what Remedy is focusing on? Uh, that is sort of the broad category we are focused on in the moment, and that is a newer term in healthcare really um, meant to embody all of the conditions that in part stem from obesity mm-hmm. and that's sort of the metabolic part of it mm-hmm. and that have cardiovascular outcomes that we're trying to improve like heart attack and stroke. So diabetes, hypertension, hyperlipidemia, you know, other forms of heart disease, all of that falls under that broad umbrella of cardiometabolic conditions. So basically you're talking about um, personalized care, kind of a a focused care on these conditions rather than, uh, I guess, a shotgun effect or a trial and error effect. Is that what we're talking about? Faster management, uh, better management or quicker uh, detection? Yeah, exactly. And and really trying to get the right treatment to the right patient at the right time um, across those different conditions, which, you know, account for about half of our healthcare costs. If you if you put diabetes together with the other cardiovascular conditions, how are you matching patients with this personalized care via Remedy? Um, so Remedy, as you mentioned at the beginning, is a cloud-based software solution. We overlay the electronic health record um, within a health system and are able to extract data from the electronic health record uh, together with data about what's happening with that patient in the home. So that could be some sort of connected device they have, like a glucometer or continuous glucose monitor or a scale for patients who have heart failure, blood pressure cuff. So by accessing both of those data sets of what happens when you go to the clinic or you're in the doctor's office and what's at home, you know, I like to say the other 360 days a year, um, we're able to, you know, drive analytics off of that data set and really identify, you know, what are that individual's needs how do they match up against guidelines for the health conditions they have and what are the best interventions to meet those needs? Are these devices supplied by Remedy or is there an app or something that connects with any device uh, regardless of its uh, its manufacturer or uh, operating system? Yeah, so we have a lot of great partners on the device side. We're not a medical device company ourselves, but um, we leverage other people's, you know, as I said, glucometers or say a home blood pressure cuff that are connected, that have a Bluetooth option or even cellular connectivity available for the patient in the home with them and have the data automatically come back. Um, Are we talking, considering the clinician's needs by more streamlining the information that's coming from the patient or streamlining it for the clinician? How exactly are we uh, addressing the clinician's needs? So I think it's a little bit of both of those. And as we've talked a lot in recent years about the consumerization of healthcare and having the patient at the center, um, I absolutely support those trends. But I think often the 
role of the clinician can be overlooked or oversimplified sometimes in, in those analysis because it's really a partnership between the clinician and the patient who are working together to manage that individual's health. And we need to get the right um, technologies and capabilities in the patient's hands. But we need to think about, you know, how do we, if we ask more and more of clinicians, we, you know, they're this burden of cardiometabolic diseases and we're trying to work on smoking and we're trying to work on, you know, other preventative measures in healthcare and especially at the primary care level. Um, how do we continue to ask more of them while in some aspects we're giving them less to work with, right? Some of the reimbursements have gotten pushed down. Their schedules are getting really, you know, crunched where that individual might have 10 minutes on their schedule per patient all day long. So that's sort of what I mean when I say we've got to think about the clinician's perspective and how do we make it easier to use this data? How do we provide them with the insights, not just the raw data, um, and, you know, really help them sort of perform at the top of their game? You know, with every uh, clinician being different, every patient being different, with all of the, uh, I guess, obstacles that you that you mentioned there briefly, what would you say is the biggest obstacle in, um, you know, facilitating that patient clinician, uh, I guess, efficiency of information flow? Um, great question. So I think it's, you know, in a way, it is simplification, right? We're we're trying to do more and more sophisticated things with data and technology, and, um, but how do we make the user experience as simple and straightforward as possible. And that's something we take great pride in of, you know, bringing sort of the, the beauty and simplicity that you find in software and products outside of healthcare into healthcare um, and really making, you know, not making people work so hard, right? It's hard work. <laughs> being a patient or being a doctor is really hard work. And we shouldn't be creating technologies that make it even uh, more difficult. How does Remedy educate both the, the clinician and the patient uh, about this new technology? I guess, um, what do you say to the, the patient or the clinician who are, for lack of a better term, set in their ways when it comes to um, technology? Yeah, so from the clinician point of view, you know, most clinicians in the U.S. now are using electronic health records. Mm -hmm. uh, many of them are not overly satisfied <laughs> with those health records because I think there was really a mismatch, right, that the, the health records were designed around billing capture, not around uh, clinical workflow optimization. And so, as I said, we come in and we layer on top and we make that experience better. Um, you know, one of my objectives is if the, if the clinician using our technology at the front lines never knows it's us and just thinks, gosh, look how much better my EHR is today, that's a big win for us because it should be that obvious and simple and an improvement on what they've been using in the way that it's, you know, presenting data and sort of next steps in care. Um, so from a clinician point of view, I think we we win that battle by creating a great experience and, and really seamlessly fitting into their existing workflow. From a patient point of view, um, you know, so our technology is generally driven from the from the clinic, from the uh, physician to the patient. And I think that relationship has been overlooked as a hook for um, driving change, meaning we know in conditions such as smoking cessation that the most meaningful person to ask a patient to quit smoking is their physician. And I think the same can be true in digital health, that when it's a physician that makes the ask and says, you know, we're introducing this new program of how we help engage uh, with our patients. I'd like for you to take this new blood pressure cuff home and data will come back to my office. I'll be able to monitor you. Or I'd like for you to use this new app or this new portal Right, that, that simple ask by the um, clinician, it might be the physician, it might be a nurse practitioner, but that's really meaningful in terms of um, engaging the patient, patient and driving sort of the sense of accountability, but also support um, for the patient. And, and so we've seen that to be very successful in getting patients on board. Where can we go online and get some more information about Remedy? Uh, at Remedy.com. It's R-I-M-I-D-I.com. Great. Dr. Ide, thank you so much for joining us here on this health supplier segment of Health Professional Radio. It's been a pleasure. 
Thank you for having me. You've been listening to Health Professional Radio, this health supplier segment, in conversation with Dr. Lucy Ide, founder of Remedy. Transcripts and audio of this program are available at hpr.fm and healthprofessionalradio.com.au. You can also subscribe to this podcast on iTunes, listen in, and download at SoundCloud. And be sure and visit our affiliates page at hpr.fm and healthprofessionalradio.com.au. Thank you for listening to Health Professional Radio. We're very proud to be an independent broadcaster providing our content free of charge to you, the listener. One of the ways that we're able to remain free and independent is by having people like you become patrons. You can support Health Professional Radio simply by visiting hpr.fm and clicking the button that says Become a Patron. Your patronage of even just $1 a month lets us know that you're there, which in turn makes us more valuable to advertisers. And, of course, if you're able to afford more, then we would certainly appreciate the support. My name is Toby Longhurst from Health Professional Radio. Please visit hpr.fm, click the Become a Patron button and support us if you can.